Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome to Our Played Iron, the channel that takes your game to the next level. I'm super excited to share with you guys the ultimate 2.6 hog cycle guide. I'm sure if you watch till the end of this video and follow all the tips that I have acquired from various top tier hog cycle players, I guarantee that you will become a much better hog cycle player. This video is going to be a long one, but it's jam packed with pro tips to play versus almost every archetype and popular deck in the game. I'm also going to cover the strengths of 2.6 and cover how to play early, mid, and late game. I'll also tell you why the 2.6 hog cycle will make you a better player. Make sure you sit tight, cause you're in for a real treat. With that being said, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and join my discord group. I want to start off by addressing that the 2.6 hog cycle deck is one of the decks with a very high skill cap. Starting place, with this 2.6 deck, it's fine to go hog first play since it's just 4 elixir and your opponent can't punish you very hard. If you don't have hog in hand, you can just cycle cards like the skeletons, ice spirit, ice golem. Make sure you don't cycle the Musketeer if they haven't played anything. Now, I'm gonna go over the strengths of this deck. Number 1. This deck is extremely fast at cycling because it only costs 2.6 elixir and you can cycle back to your hog through cycling cards like Skeletons, Ice Spirit and the Ice Golem. Number 2. Due to its low cost, you can constantly keep up the pressure as well as defend efficiently. Number 3. This deck is extremely good to cycle spells in the end game just because you can get back to multiple spe spells very quickly due to its low elixir cost. Let's go over what you should be thinking during early game, mid game and the end game. During single elixir, you should be figuring out his win condition and counter to your hog just to get your hog pushes going and you need to keep constantly pressuring. You should also use your cannon and musketeer efficiently to defend. If they have a particular counter, you have to be able to outcycle it since you have a very fast cycle deck. During double elixir or overtime, you want to be more aggressive during this time just because you can cycle back basically to whatever card you want. You want to be constantly cycling cheap cards effectively and really trying out to outcycle your opponent's counters. If you can't get past his defense with the hog, spell cycling is a viable and a very great option with this deck to end games off. You can use this to your advantage if your opponent's towers are very low. Let's kick things off by understanding how to play versus Lava Loon and Loon decks. Versus Lava Loon, you have to pressure opposite lane when they play the Lava Hound. The reason behind this play is to not let them build a huge push since they would have to defend your hog in the opposite lane. Most of the time, they will have a tombstone to defend your hog. You can either use a hog plus log to take it out or just simply fireball the tombstone. Since you have a faster hog cycle deck, you will be able to outcycle the tombstone and play your hog which puts them in a very awkward situation as they have to address the hog with units like the barbarians or minions. Against a lava hound push, stagger your musketeer to not give them spell value. This will aggro the lava hound right onto the cannon. Then you can just musketeer on the edge to shoot the lava hound. If they have supporting troops, make sure that Musketeer is targeting the support troops first and distracted with Ice Golem and Skeletons and an Ice Spirit if necessary. If they do support their push with a Balloon and Single Elixir, you want to set up a very high cannon and distract the Balloon which will give you more time to deal with the push and when the Lava Hound pops, you can just fireball the Loon and the, and the surviving pops. A pro tip versus Lava Loon is to play Musketeer as soon as you see the Lava Hound in the same lane and play a Hog to pressure as it will allow you to cycle back to another Musketeer as soon as possible. This is very important as you are thinking ahead and planning on your second set of defense. Versus Balloon Cycle decks, try activating your King Tower through using your Cannon because this is really helpful for future defensive sequences. I will show you how to activate your King Tower using a Loon and a Mini Tank with a Cannon. The same can't be done if there isn't anything tanking for the Balloon as there needs to be something tanking for it for this interaction to happen. You want to play the cannon just like this and then get back to another cannon through cycling cheap cards and placing it right in front of the king tower so that the balloon's death damage will activate the king tower. Make sure to practice this technique and get it down as soon as possible. This will help you significantly versus decks that have the balloon. Against giant and golem decks, you want to keep up the pressure and not allow them to play their tank freely. Even if they do, you want to pressure with the hog when they play the tank at the back, especially versus golem since you will get a lot of damage. There will be situations where you won't have the hog to punish your tank at the back, so make sure you play a cannon right away when they play the tank at the back if you don't have the hog to punish them. The reason behind this is that you can cycle back fast to another cannon even if they lightning your first cannon as it allows you to sort of fix your cycle. You want to play perfect defense and not give them value with their spells by staggering your musketeer and cannon far apart so that the cannon is targeting the tank and the musketeer is focused on killing the support troops. This placement allows spells like fireball, lightning and poison from not getting value as they can't hit both the musketeer and cannon at the same time. 
you want to place your ice golem and skeletons to help distract the supporting troops from attacking your musketeer. Since this is a super fast cycle deck, you can cycle back to your cannon and musketeer very quickly which should help you versus these decks. Now let's cover how to play versus the most hated deck in the game. That's right, the elixir golem. Versus the elixir golem, you need to make sure you set up your musketeer and cannon for defense and defensive fireball the supporting troops and the elixir golem. You can use your ice golem to protect your musketeer if you have it. Make sure to kill the elixir golem as soon as possible to get the elixir back from killing the last 4 blobs and pressure opposite lane with your hog. A pro tip is to kite the healer with the ice golem which will make it much easier for you to deal with and fireball lock the night witch every single time. You want to stack up multiple cannons and musketeers while defending these pushes by playing your musketeer and cannon at the back so you can cycle back to them as soon as possible. The reason that this works is that your opponent can't really take out your musketeer since they don't have a big spell. Even if they do, it'll be the fireball which doesn't completely kill your musketeer and you will get a lot of value and defense and your counter push will be very powerful. Just make sure you protect your musketeer and you're good to go. Versus graveyard decks, you just want to keep up the pressure and outcycle buildings in single elixir and get as much damage as you can. As far as defense is concerned, you can either block the bridge by using your ice golem for it not to tank for the graveyard or just set up a low cannon and musketeer near your king tower to defend versus the graveyard. Make sure to fireball and kill the mini tanks as soon as possible. I want to share a pro tip that's very useful in this matchup. You have to go hog offensively while defending because it really catches your opponent off guard. One out of two things can happen. When you hog when they're trying to graveyard results in them spending elixir on offense which usually puts them in a very low elixir amount and your hog will get a lot of damage. The second thing that can happen is when they're trying to offensively graveyard they see this hog coming and they have to defend it which makes them split their elixir in both defense and offense which ultimately makes their push very weak. In both situations you can use your cannon plus log to take care of the skeletons. If you have enough damage and your hog can't get through, spell cycling is a very good option for you and this matchup should be easy for you if you play it like this. Versus Mega Knight bait, please don't overcommit on offense. Your opponent can completely overwhelm you if you don't have enough elixir to defend. You can use your ice golem to kite the Mega Knight if you have it. Try activating the King Tower versus Mega Knight if you can. Don't be afraid to switch lanes if you really have to. Make sure to keep up the pressure and use your spells to take out small units when you know they don't have enough elixir and don't have the Mega Knight because it can get you serious amount of damage. You can use your fireball or ice spirit to reset the Inferno Dragon. I will now show you how to activate the King Tower using 2 elixir versus the Mega Knight. You can just use the skeletons and the ice spirit and this interaction will work. In this interaction, you want to play the skeletons right in the middle and then wait for the last second and then play your ice spirit right in front of the king tower for it to activate the king tower. This is a super useful interaction and a must know. Versus minor poison decks, it's important to prevent as much chip damage as possible. In this matchup, you need to have fast hands as a lot of these decks run the dark goblin, spear goblins and etc which have fast speed and loading times which can get a lot of chip damage. You want to usually catch the miner with the ice spirit and then the skeletons for a positive trade. Later when they do minor poison, you want to musketeer high to avoid giving them spell value. You can just switch up lanes if you aren't getting past his buildings later in game which will allow you to do a lot of damage. You want to be constantly pressuring in this matchup and not give him spell value and try mounting a big push with the ice golem hog and the fireball. Versus expo, you have to keep up with their cycle. Few ways that you can defend their expo are Number 1. Going on offense with the hog when they drop the expo and then shutting it down for cheap with a cannon. Number 2. Tank the expo with the ice golem and snipe it with a musketeer. Number 3. Taking down with spells while tanking with the ice golem and a center place cannon. A pro tip versus expo is to go opposite lane hog to bait out their tesla and then safely defend the expo. The idea behind this is to not allow the tesla to support the offensive expo. Eventually, you will be able to break through his defense by going in with the Ice Golem Hog Fireball combination or the Ice Golem Hog Musketeer combination. When the tower is low in terms of HP, you can just spell cycle while defending the expo. The key thing with this matchup is to just keep up with this cycle. Versus Log Bait, you will be in for a long game, cause their only way to get damage is through spell cycle and princess chip. Make sure to block the princess from sniping by understanding when they have it in cycle so you can cycle skeletons or ice spirit in the middle. You have to be constantly keeping up the pressure as well as fireballing the princess. You have to be aggressive with the ice golem hog pushes later in game as it forces him to rocket if he doesn't have inferno in hand and makes it impossible for him to rocket cycle you out. Even if he rockets later in game, you want to go in hard with your push and make it very hard for him to defend. You can switch up your defense by using skeletons and ice spirit to defend his goblin barrel and use your log on offense when you know he doesn't have inferno in hand 
This can get you a lot of damage and potentially the tower. Okay, let's cover how to play versus mirror matchup. Mirror matchup is heavily based on mind games. You want to be understanding how your opponent cycles and the way he plays cards for you to take advantage of it. These games involve tons of predictions in the form of fireball or whether to play low or a high cannon and things like that. In this matchup, you want to make sure you keep up with this cycle and not make mistakes. Versus the Royal Giant decks, you want to always pressure opposite lane with the hog and defend the RG with something cheap like the skeletons and the cannon. The Ice Spirit also buys you some time to defend versus the RG. Against Royal Giant decks, you want to switch up your cannon placements to confuse your opponent as well. Space out your cannon and musketeer so that they don't get a lot of value with their lightning as they can't lightning both of them. If your opponent sets up a slow Royal Giant push, apply pressure on the opposite lane with the hog. This will force out cards on the opposite lane, weakening the Royal Giant push. Lastly, let's cover how to play versus Pekka. You want to go opposite lane versus Pekka and force them to expend units to defend the hog. With this matchup, you want to be very aggressive and defend efficiently. Always fireball and defense if they give you a lot of value or you can just fireball the magic archer. Make sure you save cards to defend versus their pushes. This is a very easy matchup overall and if you played correctly and your defense is perfect, then this matchup is very easy to win. That's all for me guys. Hope you enjoyed the guide and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you want more content just like this.